you are help. You are the all that we have. Holy Spirit, we adore you. We thank you for the mercy of God that has been bestowed upon us. That we will be called the children of God. Lord, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we commit this month into your hand. You that have brought us this far into the beginning of the second half of the new year. You will see us through. Every one of us we will achieve our dreams, our goals that we have committed into your hands. Help us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. It's a new month. In this month, the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. We are going to take our communion as well. But before then, let us hear the word of God. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, I will quickly read from verses 23 to 27. Therefore, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle the accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. Verse 26, The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Verse 27, Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion. Everybody say, moved with compassion. Released him and forgave him the debt. I'm going to talk today very quickly on the title, The Right Attitude to Obtaining Mercy. The Right Attitude to Obtaining Mercy. Number one, Mercy is a move by God to exonerate the guilty but remorseful and repented individual. Mercy is a move by God to exonerate the guilty but remorseful and repented individual. Number two, mercy is the waving of a deserved punishment. Mercy is the waving of a deserved punishment from the guilty. Isaiah 43, verse 25. Isaiah 43, verse 25. I, even I, I am he who blots out your transgression for my own sake, says the Lord. I put that on there. Say, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. The New Living Translation reads, I, yes, I alone will blot out your sins for my own sake and I will never think of them again. I will remember them no more. Is that not very interesting? That what you used to be who you used to be, what you used to do. Thank God is gone, and God said, I will remember them no more. 
Is that not a better life? That is the mercy of God. He now says, for my own sake. <laughs> Contemporary English translation of the Bible says, because of who I am. That's why I will remember them no more. What is that to God? It's because God is holy and so we too can be holy. He wants you and I to live holy. A life without sin. When you are conscious of a sin, it is a warning by God for you not to go there. Don't shrug it off because you are not alone. He says, because of who I am, for my own sake, that is why I will remember your sins no more. He blotted out our sins and made us holy because he is holy. Number three, mercy is the character of God. It's a divine nature. To waive somebody's deserved punishment just because somebody says, please forgive me. And you decided to waive it. That is a holy character. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. It's one thing to show mercy. It's another thing to be full of mercy. He says, you are blessed if you are full of mercy. Why? Because you too will obtain mercy. That's talking to you. In this new month, be merciful and you too will obtain mercy. Number four, because it says merciful means somebody that is full of what? Mercy. So mercy, number four, mercy is measurable. You can be full of it if you so desire. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. Don't say to that person that kept coming over and over again and asking you to forgive them and say, that's how you used to do. No. Love does not give, keep record of what? Evil. You don't, or wrongs. You don't keep the records. It is not the nature of God. And it's not the nature of the God that you claim to serve. In the parable of the unforgiven servant, while his master showed him mercy, he, on the other hand, was not as merciful to his fellow servant. In that Matthew 18, 28 to 30, are you with me? Well, that servant went out, the one that was has just been forgiven, went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Remember, he owed his master 10,000 talent. When he was forgiven because he could not afford to pay back, his fellow servant, his peer, who hold him barely, how much? 100 denarii. <laughs> Open your Bible, guys. Open your Bible. Hold him 100 denarii. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. 
verse 30. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. If you show mercy, you too will obtain mercy. Don't let the devil take advantage of you, of your own ignorance. What you have not been doing, he knows your lifestyle. He knows when you are pretending. If you have received mercy, you should give mercy or show mercy to others. Remember, mercy is what you get in return if you give it prior. Hebrews chapter 4, the one we read this morning. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Are you with me? For we do not have a high priest. That high priest is written, the H is in capital letter, and the P also is in capital P. That everywhere you see a word written like that to describe someone is referring to God. So in this case, it's referring to Jesus Christ, who has become our high priest. And you know what the priests do? Priests stand in the gap for you. He pray for you. He watches over you. You know? And you so have a responsibility towards the priest so that the work of the priest will not be injured. He said, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. We all have weaknesses. When you don't pray, when you hope to pray, it's your weakness. Admit it and let God help you. When you know you ought to read the Bible on a daily basis to feed your spirit man and you don't have time and you keep pushing it away, that's a weakness to you. When you have friends that are using half word and making fun about the living God and you call yourself a child of God, you cannot tell them off. Why? Because you prefer to lose God to losing your friend. That's a shame. That's an indictment. On your own integrity as a child of God. That's your weakness. When it's time to pray, you know it is good for you to pray. Every time you wake up, you kneel down by your bedside and you pray to your living God that He not take life away from you. That's the right thing to do. And every time you keep shaving it away, shaving it aside, say, No, I don't have time. I don't have time. You don't have time for your God. That is your weakness. But He's saying here, we do not have a high priest. Who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses? In other words, he knows your weaknesses, but he's wanting you to come to him for help. He says, Jesus Christ knows your weakness, our weaknesses. He too experienced it. He knew the nature of man. Man will be tired. Man has been walking and so walking for 24 hours, walking for money. And then they said, let us come for church. Let us come for Bible study. I'm just tired. He knows our weaknesses. But he says, but was in all points tempted as we are. So there is no temptation that has befallen any man. But such God knows all those temptations. There is no temptation that you are going through that is not common to every man like you. Jesus experienced it. But he says, he too was tempted, look at it, yet without sin. When the devil suggests to you to do something bad, that's temptation. When you accept the bait, then you have sinned. But if you reject the bait, you have no sin, you move on. He did that to Jesus. Jesus Christ said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. When after 40 days, he said, 
Jesus, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become what? Bread. So he came to Jesus, but every attempt, temptation to Jesus, Jesus Christ would tell the devil, it is written. Do you know what is written? That is your weapon, your defense to fight back the enemy. The enemy, like a roaring lion, walking around, looking for whom to take for dinner. The vow. Will you allow him to, to eat you? No. Say, by whom you should resist how often? Steadfastly. In the face. Resist the devil and he will. But that's not before you submit yourself to God. When you submit yourself to God, then you'll be able to now resist the devil and he will flee. So sin will make you to lose your boldness. Sin will make you to lose your ability to fight back. Every opportunistic devil or demon will now begin to build their nests in your, on you. Why? Because you are so weak, you cannot even fight back. But the mercy of God will help you. Amen. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This is your own time of need. He said, come boldly. Sin will rob you of your boldness. Sin will stop you from being bold to pray because of guilt. But well, if you love God as he loves you, you will know that there is no father that will not show mercy on the hearing ch child if the child really is remorse. Sin will rob you of your confidence. This is why mercy triumphs over judgment. Say, let us come boldly, verse 16, that we may obtain what? Mercy. Number six, mercy is given. It's not a given. Mercy is given. It is not a given. It is not a right. It's a gift. And that is why we should come boldly to obtain it. Number seven, mercy opens the door of grace. That we may find grace to help in the time of need. Who is here that is not in need? There is no one. We need the mercy and the grace of God to help us in the time of need. The mercy of God will be revealed to you. The help from God, the help we get from God is at the expense of his mercy. And there are many of them, mercies of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of what? Mercies. And God of all comfort. God the Father in his nature and character. If mercy is a divine nature and character, God is, that is why God is referred to as the Father of mercies. He gives birth to mercy. Mercy comes from God. God is the God of mercies. So God is also the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we are here today because of the mercies of God to our patriarchs in the faith. And these mercies are still in operation today. You don't work for it. It is a gift of God. So what is the right attitude, brothers and sisters? What is the right attitude to obtaining mercy? Be holy. Say, so let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. With sin, 
you will not be able, you will not be bold to come to God. That's why some people don't come to church. Because sin held them back. They lose their confidence to come. Unbeknownst to them, God, mercy is available for them so that sin will not have dominion over them anymore. They did not remember what God has said concerning sin. He says, I alone will blot out your sins for my own sake. I will never think of them again. Because it is not the nature of God to keep remembering the sin. If you have come to him genuinely remorseful, you have come to him and you say, Lord, help me. These are my weak areas because the devil will exploit those weaknesses if you don't handle them you keep your house you say you are keeping your house in order you shut the front gate but the back gate is still open yesterday around 2 a.m i just knew that the light in the garden went on and then was switched on so i look at it i didn't see anything but then i peeped through the blind and I saw at the dining area, I saw a, a cat. I said, so you are the one. Despite all the securities that I put there that all these cats will not jump into the garden. And he was still looking. Where am I? Where am I? By the time I opened the door, it fled. I said, that's how it's supposed to be. When you submit to God, you resist the devil and the devil will flee. You need the boldness to live free from sin. The boldness will rob you of your inheritance. I mean, the lack of boldness, rather, will rob you of your inheritance in the Lord. Say, so I alone will blot out your sins for my own sake. I will never think of them again. If God says, I will never think of them again, God is God. Take that for God from him. It will not remember them again so does that mean you've forgotten about it no you still remember but then you know what you should do every time the devil reminds you tell the devil god has removed them from me devil knows what god said and devil knows that god is not a man that should lie neither a son of man that should repent he has spoken and what he said he will do so when the devil devil is just bluffing those reminders are nothing. So you just tell the devil, I've been forgiven. That's it. Amen? If you have any question, if you have any query about that, go and ask God. Because the blood of Jesus is not in vain. Are you, is somebody here with me? That's how we celebrate our freedom. Children, are you listening? And the youth as well. Don't let the devil take advantage of your ignorance. And begin to say that because you have sinned like this one, say, look who's talking. Look you, look you. But Jesus has forgiven, God has forgiven me through Christ Jesus. Don't lose your confidence. The moment you lose your confidence, you become a fool for the devil. Do you hear that? The moment you lose your confidence, you become a fool for the devil. May you not become a fool for the devil. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We need to round up now. I alone will blot out your sins for my own sake. I will never think of them again. Let us stand on our feet. If God say that, so why is this thing on my mind? What I've done 20 years ago. Why is this thing in my mind? What I've done many years ago. They are in your mind because they are just pictures. God has removed them, blocked them out by the blood of Jesus. But then the devil keeps showing you the picture of what you have done in ages past. Now, if I were you, I will ask God again. Forgive me, Lord. Perhaps you have not asked him. 
genuinely. Forgiveness must come from your heart. Ask him, forgive me for this thing. I plead the blood of Jesus. Say, so if I see the blood, destruction will pass. There is no shedding of blood without remission. The blood of Jesus has blotted out the sin. If God says, I will remember them no more, it's no more. Don't let the devil fool you. Ask God genuinely for the last time. Lord, I confess my sin. I denounce them. From today, I receive your forgiveness. Help me to move on. Help me to move forward. I give you my heart. I give you all myself. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. In this month of the mercies of God, mercy always triumphs over judgment. That which the enemy says, I cannot become. And the enemy kept taunting me. Jehovah, you have forgiven me. I plead the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus clean me from all unrighteousness. Give me a new heart and a new spirit. Help me to become who you ask me to be. That's your salvation for you. Begin to thank him. You will become. In this month of mercies of God, of the mercies of God, you will become. You will triumph. You will prevail. You will succeed. You will be healed. You will make it. You will be saved. You will be delivered. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. If it doesn't come from your heart, it's not sincere. But if it comes from your heart, God sees your heart. The devil has no right to condemn you anymore. For there is no condemnation. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. The Bible says there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. How many people are free from the law of sin and death? Sin and death, is a, the, 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 sin has a law. Death has a law. That's why people keep doing it. But when God has freed you by the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, you, you will not be committing those sins anymore. Let's thank him for his favor. Let's thank him. In this new month, I am moving forward. In this new month, I am moving forward. Against all odds. You believe that? Lord will thank you. Lord will bless you. And if you are there, you have not yet received him as your Lord and Savior, why don't you do that? Let's take this opportunity, seize the moment, and ask him to be your Lord and Savior and come into your heart. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. That song says, I will never be same again. I will never return. I've closed the door. Sing now. Do not it. I run the race. And I will never be the same again. Oh, I will never be alone. I will never be same again I will never return I will never return because I've closed the door I will run the race I will run the race I'll run the race 
Received of the Lord that same night in which he took the bread. And delivered it. For I receive of the Lord that which I also deliver to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks he broke it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's look at ourselves. The Bible says we should examine ourselves if we are still in the faith. You know, why I'm smiling is just because what God is showing me here, that you cannot be offended with these people because they still don't know me. See, that's why I'm just smiling. So it's okay to be doing what you're doing, but if you, knew, if you know God, you will not do that. I don't need to be telling you to, not to make noise in the presence of God. If you know him, you will not do that. So let's examine ourselves and commit ourselves to him. As I'm about to take this communion table, it is not a play thing. It's an ordinance that mark what Christ represents to us in the world. The chastisement of our peace was laid on him. The punishment of our sin was laid on him. And so by his blood, the Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus who we are healed. So blood came out and water came out of his body while on the cross and that's very significant in our recovery because the life of a beast is in the blood so the blood of jesus was the atonement for our sin it cleared our sin to the shame of the devil it made us to become who we are today and who we will be tomorrow Examine yourself before you partake of this ordinance so that you don't bring damnation to yourself. Is something deterring in your life? Is something about to expire? Are you in a difficulty? Are you in a struggle for your life? Is it your marriage? Is it any of your children or your parents? Is it your job? Is it your health? Whatever it is, let us come boldly 
to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This is the time of need. Talk to him. You will not lose your job. Your business will expand. Your marriage will flourish. Your children will not be cast away. You will not lose your mind. Your health will pick up. Your academics will prog make progress. You will pass that exam. Why don't you talk to him? Show me mercy, O oh God. God cannot be talking to you to do away with a sinful lifestyle and you are pretending as if you don't know. That is not sincere. Ask him to show you his mercy. That as I partake of this ordinance, the power to become the Son of God, the power to live well above sin, the power of transformation, let it come into my life. I've been hearing about Christianity. I thought I am a Christian. I'm not a Christian because I was born to a Christian family. I'm not a Christian because I come to church. I'm a Christian if the life of Christ is in me. Why don't you ask him, give me your life, O oh God, the life of Christ. As I partake of this, everything in my life, in my generation, that I bring a curse to me, generational curse shall be turned generational blessing. As I partake of this, talk to him. That's what we believe in. This is the month of transformation. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, whoever eat this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. I want this month to be a turning point for me. I want this month to be a turning point for Church on the Raw. I want this month, oh God, to be a month of release for us, to serve God from our heart. As we partake of this, oh God, open the heart of every man and put the life of Christ in there. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Thank you. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. Please take your seat. What can make me all again? Nothing but the blood. So precious is the fruit that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. To the bee, bee, bee. Of Jesus Christ.
let me challenge somebody among us. Is there something that runs in your family that you are afraid that maybe it will touch you? Is there a spirit of death that runs in family? Or a particular pathology, a particular disease? Is there something you are quietly, silently suffering from? And there's a kind of a feeling that maybe I'm next in line to be affected. With every eyes closed, of course. Let's break that course. Let, let's break that course. Let's believe God as I surrender all to the Lord. And as I partake of this covenant, I'm renewing the, my covenant with the Lord. This is called the covenant of life. I will not die, but I shall live to declare the glory of God. Where others have failed, I will make it. Am I talking to somebody? Let's challenge God that as we partake this, in this month of mercies of God, I will receive, I will obtain mercy from God. In the name of Jesus. And when he had given thanks, let's thank him. Thank him for the new beginning. Thank him for the new you. Thank him for the promotion. Thank you for the provision. Thank you for the job provision. Thank you for the house provision. Thank you for the provision of a new beginning. Believe that? This is what God will do. Now, without faith, let's thank him. Thank him in advance. Mention that blessing. Thank him. The same way you have thanked him, he will not receive your thanks for nothing. The same way you have thanked him, he will accept your thanks and you will become a new man. Then he said, take it. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake together. For our soul have escaped. The snare is broken. This is a new beginning. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. I see some people drink it already. Saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup. Begin to thank him. Thank him for that particular blessing you have prophesied into your life. Thank him for that particular blessing you have prophesied. This time next month, you will come back and testify of the same blessing you have called forth. You didn't hear that. Amen. This time next month, you will come back and testify of the same blessing you are prophesying now Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord will bless you. Stand up on your feet and let's thank him. This is by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. It's not a wasted time. It's not a time wasted. It's a time well spent in God's presence. Lord will bless you. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks for that which he has done for this month. We thank you. Lord will bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for the new us. Thank you for the new position. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for addition of years. Lord, we bless you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you for the examination success. Thank you for the life of Christ in us. We receive it all. We honor you. We bless 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 you. Thank you. We give you praise. So shall it be. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's clap those hands together for the Lord. We believe, therefore, we have spoken. So shall it be for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please take your seat. Minister Taiwo, collect the offering, please.